Welcome to JHeart Model Works. In this video, we'll tackle the engine on the Revell 69 Nova Restomod. Welcome to my workbench. Let's get started. One thing I have done off camera is I've added a half millimeter pin to the fuel pump. The fuel pump just glues in right here and it's a flush fit. Pinning this will give it a stronger joint and prevent it from breaking off while handling the engine later. We want to use our dead center tool from Scale Pro Shop and form a pilot hole. Then we'll drill a half millimeter hole in the block. Just a quick test fit to make sure everything is going to fit nice and flush. I'm leaving this long, it's easier for the paint stick to hold it, but when it comes time to actually glue it in place, I will cut it down shorter. Now we want to go ahead and glue the two halves of our engines together. I'm just going to use some Tamiya Extra Thin on both sides of the engine. And then press them together. So here's our intake manifold. This is the hole for the distributor. This other hole is for the ignition coil, but I'm going to use one from Protec, so we want to fill this hole. We'll start by pushing some of the black rubberized CA glue through the hole from the bottom. Then we'll hit it with some InstaSet. And finally, we'll sand it smooth with our 400 grit sander. Once we get some primer and paint on it, you won't even notice it's there. This set of headers is pretty much terrible. There are deep sinks in it and a huge mold seam running right through it. We'll start with our various metal files to remove the mold seam and flatten out what we can, as well as using our round metal file to clean up any flash in between the headers. I'd really like to get a nicer set of metal files. These are an old set from testers that I had like 10 maybe 15 years ago uh, I got them for you doing jewelry with but they're not all that great but they get the job done to fill up the sink holes we're going to use the same trick with the black CA glue we'll fill up the holes hit them with some activator and then we'll sand and file them smooth Sometimes it's necessary to apply multiple layers, and in this particular case, I got a little aggressive with the sander and completely removed the super glue plug, so we're just going to add another round and repeat the process. Eventually it should look nice and smooth like this. Back to the engine block, there are some visible seams, but most of them we're not even going to bother with. This seam on the top of the transmission will sit against the chassis and never be seen. This seam on the front is going to be covered with the water pump and pulleys. We'll smooth it a little bit, but we aren't going for any crazy invisible seam. We just want the parts to sit flat. The same with the top of the block. The intake manifold will cover it completely. We just want to make sure that it sits flat. The only part that is going to really be seen is the bottom of the transmission, so we want to focus our attention here. We're going to clean it up as best as we can using our sanders and our triangle file to get in between the nooks and crannies.
The kit has no drain plug on the oil pan, and as you can see, there should be one here on the driver's side edge sitting in an indent. To replicate that indent, we're going back to our triangle file, and we're going to carefully file in a slight diagonal indent right on this seam. We want to be real careful. We don't want to go through the part and make a hole. We just want to make an indent so that we can set our drain plug in later. Next, we're going to hold our exhaust headers in place while we pre-drill the holes for our spark plugs. We want the headers in place to make sure we can get to our spark plug holes later during assembly. The last thing you want is to get everything painted and assembled and then find out you can't get the spark plug wires in because the headers are in the way of the plug holes. The valve cover detail is pretty soft. I think these bumps are supposed to be either oil breathers or the mounts for a PVC valve hose. Either way, we're going to drill holes right in the center of them, and later on we'll replace these with some really nice turned aluminum oil breathers from Protec. Now there is going to be a lot of goodies from Protec in this engine build. In the past, on the Chevelle build, Protec has sponsored me, but for this particular build, everything is bought out of pocket. I really do use these products on a regular basis. I really think they are some of the best aftermarket supplies out there. Once they're drilled to the right size, I'm just going to use my sharp round file just to clean up any burrs from the drilling process. The oil cap detail is almost non-existent. We'll carefully remove the side lumps with a hobby knife and clean it up with a sander. We do want to leave it raised a bit though. Later on, we'll replace it with a photo etch oil cap, and having that cap raised a little is really going to help sell it. Unfortunately, my brand new phone locked up and lost a lot of the basic assembly footage. What we've done so far is we've added the oil pan, the starter, the fuel pump, our water pump, our oil filter, and the driver's side head is in place. We'll continue from here by adding our passenger side heads. Then we'll add our intake manifold. I'm testing out these super glue tips I saw Paul from International Scale Modeler using. I'm not sure I'm sold on them yet. They might work better with a full bottle of glue though. This one is almost gone and what is in it is really starting to get thick. It's about time for a new bottle of glue. Next up we have our headers which I did in candy red over Alclad Chrome. I really like the candy over chrome effect and it works really well on small parts. Watch your fingers while gluing things together though and wash them regularly. Getting super glue on that finish would be terrible. Next we're going to glue on the carburetor. I did shave a little off the bottom of the carb and off the top of the intake manifold just to help the air cleaner fit in the hood better. I know we drilled the spark plug holes during prep, but we're going to drill them again for two reasons. One, we want to make sure they didn't fill up with paint. Two, we're going to drill into the block so that the plug wires can travel further in. Next, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of super glue to all the points for the headers. And then we'll press those in place. We'll repeat for the other side and the exhaust headers will be done. This is where we add those beautiful oil breathers from Protac. We're going to use a sewing pin to put a little bit of CA glue inside the hole. Then we'll carefully set each of the breathers in place. For our oil cap, we're going with one of these 3.3 millimeter caps from Small Great Details. They are beautiful photo etch pieces and really look the part. 
For handling tiny parts like this, I really like to take a blob of blue tack and roll it into a fine point. I can then add a tiny drop of CA on the valve cover and use the blue tack to pick up the photo etch and carefully set it in place. Just hold it still long enough for the glue to take hold and then lift off. I can then use some tweezers to move around the piece and press it home if needed. Next we want to work on the distributor and plug wires, with, starting with a distributor from Protec. And we want to take the resin base for the distributor cap and we're going to drill nine holes in it. There are nine indentions, one in the center for the ignition coil wire and then eight around for the spark plug wires. We need to drill a hole the size of our spark plug wire. Protec gives you the instructions on the back that tells you exactly what size bits to use. There is at least three hours of raw footage for this section alone. So I'm not going to show you every single plug being done. I will have try to show you at least one or two instances of each step through the process so you see what I'm doing and how it's done. For instance, I'm not going to show you every hole being drilled, but I will show you some of them and I'll show you the final results which with this Protec stuff is really nice. I've sanded off the flash on the bottom of the resin cap and I'm putting it on an Altoid box for painting with some double-sided tape. Once we have it painted, we're going to put a little bit of super glue on the aluminum base. And then we'll glue our cap in place. The first wire I'm going to do is going to be the ignition coil wire in the center, so I'm just going to cut a piece kind of long. And I'm just going to dip it in some super glue and glue it into place in the center of the distributor. I'm putting a piece of double sided tape down on my cutting board. I have this section of spark plug boot material that comes with the distributor, and I need to cut it into small pieces. Cutting it while it's on the double-sided tape will reduce the likelihood of those small pieces flying off. Now we need to slide that tiny little bit of boot material we just cut onto the end of our plug wire, a little bit of super glue, and then push the boot down to the end of the wire. Looks a lot easier than it actually is. I cut out all the misses just to keep the video short. Now we're going to drill the hole for our distributor out so that it'll fit and just give it a test fit. And next, I'm going to take some of the spark plug wire and I'm going to run it for my longest possible run. This will give me the maximum length that I'm going to need so that I can cut eight of the same size. Now that I have the longest measured, I can just use it as a template and cut seven more. Once we have all of our plug wires cut, we're just going to repeat that process, dip them in some glue, glue them into the holes around the distributor, and add the wire boots. And we magically fast forwarded to our last one. And our distributor is all done and the plug wires are all super clean. Next, we're going to put some glue in the hole that we drilled for the distributor, and we're going to permanently glue it in place. On the Chevelle build, some people rib me for not gluing the plugs in the right order. Normally, I don't really worry about the plug order. Usually, I'm using the kit distributor, and I'll be lucky just to get enough plug wires glued into it, much less in any kind of order. But the Protec distributors are really clean. 
So I figured why not go ahead and do these in the correct order. So we're going to start out by sorting all these plugs into their proper place. Now we have our neat little eight-legged spider. To keep all these plug wires clean and organized, we're going to use some Protec wire looms. So we're going to run the first plug wire into the first slot on a four-hole wire loom and then cut it off the fret. Next we want to run the remaining three plug wires through the wire loom, keeping them in the correct order. I really like using wire looms. They really help the engine look really clean and organized instead of just a mess of wires. Once we have all the plug wires in the wire loom, we want to push it up into place and then glue it down. I try to glue from the underside so it won't be seen as much. Next, we're going to split the plug wires into the front two and the back two, and we're going to add some two hole wire looms on here as well. Again, we're going to go ahead and slide our wire loom into place where we want it, and then we're going to glue it in from the back side. Next up, we have some Protec plug boots, and we want to cut these into thirds, so you really do get your money's worth with these. Once you cut it into a third, you're just going to slide it onto the end of the plug wire, which I make look really easy, but it's really not. Next, we're going to cut off the excess wire, leaving pretty much just enough to put a little glue on and stuff into the hole we drilled for the spark plug wires. Once we finally have it wiggled into place, we're going to add a little bit more super glue and then just push our boot down to the end of the cable. Once we get it wriggled into place, we're just going to repeat that process for the rest of these plugs. Just wiggle them into place, add some glue, and push the boot down. Now we're going to add another two hole wire loom to the front two wires. We'll add a little glue to the underside of the wires and then slide the wire loom into place over the glue. Next, I want to use our tweezers to work and tuck the wires in, help them run along the top of the heads. It's important to help the wires flow and to bend them so that they flow along the shape of the heads and the valve covers. Gravity exists, but in scale, we have to help it a little bit as it won't really pull the same on these tiny wires. Tucking and, and bending and getting it to follow the curves of the engine will make it look a lot more realistic than just having these straight runs shoot right to the plug holes. And here's the result of all that work. Next we're going to add some throttle linkage. I don't do this much, or well. 
I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I think I got something somewhat reasonable. We'll start by drilling a hole in the carburetor. Then we'll grab a number one insect pin and one of these pieces of throttle photo etch from Protec. Then we'll slide the photo etch over the pin and stick the pin into the carburetor. This lets me set the photo etch to the right place on the pin so that it sits against the carb. I can then take it back out and glue it in place. Now we'll set that aside for a bit and we're going to make a return spring. We'll grab another insect pin and a bit of 30 gauge hookup wire. You want to strip the insulation off the hookup wire, and then we'll wrap the wire around the pin until we get a coil about the right length. You can then use your fingernail to space the coil out a little bit. From here, we want to run the end of the spring wire through the hole on the other end of the throttle photo etch piece, and then we'll glue it down. Then we can bend down the ends and trim them off. Now one of the things you don't see, because I was out of frame again, is me making a 90 degree bend in the original insect pin so that it will run alongside the carb and the engine and run to the back of the engine. Once that's done, we're just going to slide it underneath the spark plug wires and push the pin into the hole we made on the side of the carb. I left the throttle linkage sticking out a little bit so I could get some CA glue on the pin behind it and then we'll just push it all the way in up against the side of the carburetor. Next with our tweezers we're just going to wiggle our return spring where we want it and if you want you can glue that down as well. It's not perfect but like I said I think I got something reasonably realistic looking here. One more thing I forgot to do, you do need to cut the end of the pin off close to the end of the engine so that it will fit in your engine bay. On the other side of the car, we're going to run our fuel line, starting with, yep, drilling a hole. I'm going to use the 0.035 inch braided line because I don't have the right fittings to use the 0.025. These fittings can be a pain to get on. They are very snug. If you try more than twice the braided line phrase and you really need to recut and try again on a clean end. I did not get these both in one shot. More like 20 tries each. But I want both of these on the line before I do anything else. Once I bend and test and fit everything I can glue the fittings in place and don't have to fight with trying to get them on again because I have to make a new line. Like I said, right now I'm just bending it and test fitting and getting things where I want it. I'll move the other fitting back up to the middle of the line before I cut the final end. Now we're going to drill another hole, this time in the side of the fuel pump. And I really wish I had done this before I glued the fuel pump on, but it's okay. We managed to do it without breaking anything. Another test measure, and we're going to cut this one a little long because we do need to strip a little of this back. This will give us something to glue into our fuel pump. Now that we have the braided line, the length and shape we want, we're just going to touch a little bit of super glue to the end and slide that fitting right up onto the glue. Be careful not to slide it too far and slide it off though. Like I said, I stripped a little bit off of both ends, leaving a little bit of the wire core out. We're going to put a little bit of super glue on the ends of each one of these and then just slide them into the holes we drilled. And voila, we have a fuel line. 
Now if we want, we can run another fuel line from the bottom of the fuel pump to the gas tank, but if we do that, it'll be during the chassis section of the build, and it's really not anything anyone's going to see. The Chevy 427 engine has a small 90 degree angle hose that connects the water pump to the intake manifold. Before we start on the pulleys, we want to replicate this hose. I'm going to use some Protec heater hose for this. We will start again with our dead center tool and then drill a hole in the front of the intake manifold as well as into the top of the water pump. Now the heater hose isn't a small single core wire, it is a bit thicker and it's braided wires inside the shielding. So you could probably use a 26 or 28 gauge hookup wire maybe, I don't know. But when I use the heater hose like this, I do strip off a bit from both ends and I cut some of the extra wires off so I can fit it into a smaller hole. Otherwise you need to drill like a 0.8 or a 0.9 millimeter hole to fit all the wires. But in the end, we do successfully get our small 90 degree coolant hose run. We also want to drill a hole on top of the intake manifold as well as the top passenger side of the water pump for running the heater hose in the future. Another awesome addition to a build like this is a nice set of turned aluminum pulleys like the ones I got from Mr. Model. This is the water pump pulley. This one is the crank pulley. This one over here is the alternator pulley. And this is the smog pump we're going to get rid of because all the smog pump does is sap horsepower and make the EPA people happy. The water pump pulley is the easy one. It's already got a hole in place. I don't have to drill anything. I don't have to worry about alignment. I just get to glue it straight into place. The crank pulley will take more work. The kit part is a female fitment and the new metal pulley is male. So I'm going to need to drill a hole to make it fit. But I also need to make a spacer so the two pulleys will line up evenly. The kit pulley is just a wide blob, so it sits up against the face of the engine with no problem. This pulley is not, so without a spacer, the crank pulley will sit too far back. We'll use our nippers to remove the mounting nub from the engine as it will get in the way of our spacer. Now we want to test fit our pulley to make sure it fits in the hole. Line it up with the water pump pulley and use some digital calipers to get our spacer length. Okay, to make our pulley, we're going to start by drilling a 1.2 millimeter hole straight into the end of a piece of 3.2 millimeter plastic rod, which is honestly a lot harder than it would seem. It took me several goes to actually get the drill to go in straight instead of coming out of the side. We always want to test fit. Once we have it drilled, we can just go ahead and cut. We're doing it to the best of our ability here. I really wish I had a tool that would make these really short cuts like this, like 1.3 millimeter cuts, a lot easier. If you know of something, let me know in the comments below. So I did end up cutting it a little long. I'm going to go ahead and use a metal file and just keep shaving down until I get the right fit. Test fit and test fit over and over. Just sand a little bit off. Test fit, sand a little bit more off. All right, so we went ahead and painted that a nice silver. We're going to go ahead and stick our pulley on there. And after another test fit, we'll go ahead and glue this into place. First two pulleys are done. Now it's time to work on the alternator. Speaking of the alternator, we have a turned aluminum and photo etch alternator from Mr. Model. I could use the kit alternator with the pulley from the pulley set. But this one's a bit beefier and it's going to add a little more pop to our engine. One thing I have noticed though is this hole is not always big enough. Sometimes you have to drill it out a little for the pulley to fit. The alternator kit comes with some really nice photo etch, including the fins that I like to paint gold, the bracket that goes on the alternator, as well as two different length mounting brackets to mount the alternator to the engine. We're going to be going with this longer one here. We want to cut the photo etch fins and the diamond shaped bracket off the PE fret and slide them onto the pulley. Next, we're going to cut off the long photo etch bracket to mount it to the engine, and we're going to glue this carefully onto the alternator. Then we're going to go wash our hands because we did get super glue on our fingers. With the bracket in place, now we're going to go ahead and glue our pulley with its photo etch pieces into place. 
I'm using a fairly thin CA glue, so it's going to seep in here, and it's going to glue all the parts where they need to be. But because the CA is behind all the photo etch, you'll never see it. Now on the other end of the mounting bracket, we need to make two opposing 90 degree bends to make a zigzag. This is going to push the alternator forward a little bit from the face of the engine. But we need to make sure where we bend them so that the alternator pulley ends up in line with the other two pulleys. Then we will add a tiny drop of CA glue and push this in place. Now this is a little fiddly, so to help it set quicker, I'm going to put a drop of Insta set on here. Alright, all three of our pulleys are in place, now it's time to make a belt. Pulley kit comes with this rubber tubing, which is okay, but I want something a little more realistic. I want something flat, like an actual belt. We'll start by laying out a long piece of black electrical tape. Then we're going to go ahead and cut this long ways to make two pieces. We're going to lift one up and lay it right back down on top of the other. This is going to give us a little bit of depth. Next, we're going to take a piece of 1mm wide Tamiya tape and lay it across. We're going to use this as a cutting guide to get a nice straight piece. Then using our metal ruler as a cutting guide, we're just going to go ahead and cut this straight along that tape line on both sides. And removing it gives us a 1 inch wide rubber belt. thought about just pushing the tape down into place, but over time electrical tape can lift. So instead, I'm going to add just a tiny drop of CA glue to each pulley just to help keep the tape in place. You want to be very careful when working around the alternator, though. It is only held in place by a tiny, thin strip of photo etch, and it can be broken off or bent out of position very easy. You want to make sure the belt is tight, but don't pull it so tight that it bends the alternator or pushes it to an angle. Just keep it taut enough so that it flows around the pulleys convincingly and doesn't bulge anywhere in the middle. Now with some sharp scissors, we'll just cut off the end and then press it smooth at the bottom. And that is the entire pulley system. We're almost done, but the oil pan still needs a little bit of love. Remember the beginning when we notched the oil pan for the drain plug? We're going to use a 0.04 inch Protec bolt head for that. The easiest way to get these off this rubber backing is to just scrape one or two off with your finger or thumbnail. Then we're going to take a toothpick and place a tiny little drop of super glue right in the center of that notch. Now, if you moisten the other end of the toothpick, make sure it's the other end with a little bit of saliva, it will give you just enough surface tension to pick up the photo etch bolt head and let you place it right where you want it. And pretty much the moment you touch it to the surface, it's going to release from the toothpick. On the other side of the oil pan is a triangular bit, which is where the dipstick tube connects to the oil pan. But ours doesn't have one. So I just model one up. I always print off several spares when I make tiny parts like this because I tend to lose them. So we're just going to use our nippers to cut one of these off. Then we'll go ahead and put a tiny drop of super glue right about here. And we'll just place our little triangle part right where we want it. Once that's had quite a while to cure, we want to go ahead and drill a 0.4 millimeter hole in the center of the triangle. Because it wasn't ridiculously tedious the first time I did this, we're now going to drill a 0.6 millimeter hole straight down the end of a 1 millimeter piece of plastic tubing. We will then thread some 30 gauge black hookup wire into that hole and then use our display nippers to cut it off just a sliver of that plastic. And then we need to carefully slide our plastic sliver down onto the wire. Now what you don't see me doing here is bending a little hoop into the end of the wire. Now we'll add a little dab of glue right to the base of the loop and push our little plastic ring up to the base of the loop to form our dipstick. A little white primer and yellow paint and we are almost done. What we need to do next is to carefully thread the wire through the space between the headers and the engine right at that second opening. Pull it down to the length we want it. Make sure to leave a little bit of extra. We will pull the wire back out and strip the end 
and then we'll thread it back through. We will add some glue to the end off screen where you can't see it. That's helpful. And then we will carefully tuck the end with the glue into the hole. And just like that, we're done. Oh, one last thing. I drilled a two millimeter hole and glued in a magnet into the carburetor and I glued another one into the center of the air cleaner and voila, our engine is now complete. So that is a wrap for the engine video and I have to say, I think this one is on par, if not maybe a little better than the Chevelle engine. I am really happy with all the little details on here. You know, all of our oil pan mods like the drain plug and the dipstick. The plug wiring is in firing order, the throttle linkage, the oil breathers, the pulleys. That belt came out fantastic. I was going to use a ProTech air cleaner, but I found this one on Colts 3D and it just looked awesome. So I went ahead and printed it. One thing you will notice is I did not install the fan. And that is because I have been hard at work 3D modeling and printing up a electric fan that's going to attach to the radiator that'll give us more visibility so that we can see these pulleys and it would make more sense to remove that excess weight off these pulleys for more horsepower from here i'm going to start working on the engine bay the chassis and the exhaust depending on how far i get i may also work on the suspension but i need to figure out what i'm doing for brakes and how i want to try and mount the wheels but not right now it's after midnight, Friday night, and I'm trying very hard to get this video out Saturday morning because it's been three freaking weeks since I posted a video and I'm having anxiety over it. And tomorrow morning, Saturday the 17th, I'm taking four builds to the Supercon model show in Arlington, Texas. So if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, that's going to be 9 to 5 at the Bob Duncan Community Center at Vandergriff Park in Arlington. So like always, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you taking your time to watch, and I'll catch you on the next one. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also, feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comments section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comments section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.